Hey, what's going on, everybody? Justin here. I'm glad to be bringing back another dedicated book review. And it's something I want to do a lot better with in 2022 for the channel is, you know, just dedicated kind of book review uh, videos. And what I've been doing, well, I say what I've been doing in the last video, um, I gave a couple options of books that I'm planning on reviewing, which one everyone wanted to see first. And this book here, I got the most support in the comment section, and it is Thomas Halliday's Otherlands. A journey through Earth's extinct worlds, dealing with kind of different ecosystems and the flora and fauna, you know, of the past Earth. Uh, before we get into that book, we're gonna talk about let's see the three uh, new ones that people can, I guess, I don't want, I don't want to say vote on, but you know, just talk about in the comment section, whichever one gets the most support. So when I'll be doing next in the queue, we've got the War That Made the Roman Empire, Antony, Cleopatra, and Octavian at Actium by Barry Strauss, about kind of uh, one of the uh, Roman civil wars during the. Second triumvirate, obviously between Mark Antony and uh, Octavian, with kind of like a heavy slant towards Antony and Cleopatra is kind of the, the shtick of that one. We have Meg Loman's The Arbonaut, life, or excuse me, a life discovering the eighth continent and the trees above us. And this is all about sort of becoming uh, a tree scientist, kind of the hurdle she had to jump through in her professional career, as well as all, 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 let's see, I guess, all the different, like really cool um, collaborative project she's done uh, as a professional scientist over the last like, couple decades, which is really cool. And then taking, let's see, taking other lanes place, we've got The Secret History of Food, Strange But True Stories About the Origins of Everything We Eat by Matt Siegel. And this is just like a funny sort of, uh, I guess, just deep dive of a couple different like food groups and specific uh, food items and ingredients and um, just some hilarious anecdotes about how crazy some of the stuff we're putting in our bodies, what it's all about. So let me know in the comments down below which of those three uh, books you'd like to see me do um, a book review uh, video next. And now let's go on to Otherlands. So first off, thanks to Random House uh, for sending me this book for uh, a book review. So definitely shout out to them. And actually, before I go too far, before I forget, we actually sent like this really cool kind of weird manuscript like almost like proof copy too as, as well which i thought was just like kind of super interesting um like it doesn't have page well i think it does some of them have page numbers some don't but it's just like one of those like proof things i don't know just gonna be like a special kind of like weird i don't know if that's like a common thing with book review stuff i've never uh gotten one of these before i had no idea what it was at first um but really interesting definitely gonna keep that one in the library so here we are with other lanes, and like I said earlier uh, in the video, it's kind of all about sort of uh, kind of doing a deep dive of different ecosystems in Earth's uh, deep history, uh, all the way back to you know basically the beginning of life on planet Earth four billion years ago or what have you. Um, so I usually try to with my book reviews kind of deal with the negative stuff first, uh, and then move into the positive stuff. Unfortunately for this book, there's really not a whole lot of negative uh, going on. I will say. Uh, maybe for someone who doesn't read a lot of prehistory or kind of biology books, geology books, things like that, there is, it's not super technical. Like, I wouldn't say it's like, it's not academic or like technical by any means. Um, there is quite a bit of sciencey jargon kind of thrown around sometimes. I um, mean, he does do a good job explaining it, um, but there are a few parts that are kind of dry, <laughs> basically. Um, if you're not into that uh, sort of thing, granted, you're probably not going to be picking up a lot of like, you know, big nonfiction books like this, if you're not kind of interested in the topic uh, as well. But maybe for someone who's never read anything kind of like on some of these topics, it, it is a little jargon heavy um, in a few areas, uh, particularly in the front half of the book, I found um, was definitely more so than the back end. And we'll kind of get into that uh, in a little bit um, as well. And I guess that would be my only other critique is there are a few sections where um, it, it doesn't get maybe too technical, but uh, this kind of lose sight of the narrative right and the pros and stuff and it gets just kind of you know cut and paste not cut and paste cut and dry just here's the science behind certain like methods and uh what have you uh but other than that uh that's about it um kind of going into the book what the author does is we start at the uh, i guess not exactly the present day but only a few um you know a few millennia ago a couple 10 10 20 000 years out into the ice ages um and he works his way backwards uh uh eight epochs backwards rather than a lot of uh histories such as this uh, geology books and things like that will start at the beginning um and then kind of work their way forward towards the present time whereas the author kind of takes that and does it in reverse so i thought that was actually a really neat approach unfortunately i don't know if it's just i read a lot of ice age books and dinosaur books and things like that uh, that 
the like I said, the first half of the book just seemed more dry to me, but that might have been more just I knew more about that kind of stuff uh, beforehand. So when I got to past like the dinosaur age, past like the Triassic and Cretaceous, uh, Jurassic, all that stuff, um, it just seemed a lot more interesting. Uh, but that might have been just sort of uh, my take on it. Um, but like I said, I think it was a really interesting way of showing it. Now, the author does a really good job on basically several different things here. Uh, first of all, I would say that the author does a good job kind of explaining that not all these different ages uh, in the Earth's past, the ecosystems, the form of fauna, or whatever, was uniform throughout the whole planet. Um, so even though we think of, you know, I guess, uh, like, you know, the Carboniferous period being kind of like a hot, swampy uh, sort of period, not everything about it is going to be like that and across the entire globe. And he kind of makes that point, you know, just like kind of our, you know, day and age. You know, we have tundras, we have deserts, we have rainforests, this and that. We've got all kinds of things sort of going on. And pretty much every age of the Earth's past also had that um, in, you know, to different uh, varying degrees and whatnot. Uh, but not every single period is going to be like uniform across the planet. Um, he does do a good job kind of describing not just like the flora and fauna, which is probably my favorite part just because, you know, I have a whole like <laughs> nature section. Probably do some videos like in front of like the nature books and whatnot. Um, so each each chapter um, is a different age of the Earth's past. But what he does is he takes a fossil site um, and kind of does sort of a loose deep dive on that like fossil site and then kind of expands um, globally from that point in time if that makes sense i don't know that might not, might not made a whole lot of sense but so you get like kind of a lot of detailed history of like a certain like real uh kind of i guess detailed thing and then kind of just generalizes uh from there uh in particular i really like the chapters on the cambrian uh the carboniferous and the ordovician uh some of the neat things i learned you know uh, like how uh from some other books you know uh humans are more closely related to some fish than a lot of fish are to like other kinds of fish and stuff, which is kind of a weird concept and whatnot. But he kind of does an ex explanation of why that's so, but how evolutionary, or evolutionarily, is evolutionary, evolutionarily, can't remember <laughs> which one's the, the right way to put it. Um, how there's different ways you can be distant, uh, both linearly and then like kind of across space and time, I guess. It's, I don't know, I'm probably doing a really terrible job explaining it. He does a lot better uh, explaining like how that works. Um, and for example, when he's kind of dealing with the Cambrian, uh, he does a really good job explaining why all these different body plans might have been able to like sort of come about uh, during that time period and none have basically come afterwards. Um, and kind of like the, not, like sort of the different competing theories as to why that is. And I like how he probably, he kind of gives sort of his opinion on like which one's probably like the more leading theory or, and why you probably should uh, be leaning in that way. Um, and one other thing that I think the author does a tremendous job at is kind of bringing all these uh, distant time periods, uh, for example, when we're dealing with the Carboniferous period, how it actually still relates to what's going on today. For example, with the Carboniferous period, obviously, that's when a lot of the coal uh, and oil that and all the fossil fuels that we're extracting nowadays um, basically take root in the Carboniferous period. And that is how we even have these things, uh, go, like why, you know, it's possible for us to do it, you know, millions of years later and kind of all the you know ramifications uh, he does describe how you know over the you know the past history of the earth there's been tons of just change tons of adapt adaptations that pretty much every living thing has had to like kind of um you know adjust to either perish or you know change or perish adapt or perish whatever um and kind of explaining how you know we're kind of like on that trajectory going towards similarities and in certain you know instances uh, of these sort of extinction events and whatnot um, obviously we're pretty far off, but it's more about the time scale, you know, over if, you know, the environment changes over, you know, a hundred thousand years or a million years, most things can adapt to it, but, you know, over, you know, a blink of an eye, essentially over the past, you know, 200 years, it's quite a bit different. So I do like how the author, uh, definitely pretty much brings into focus all these different, uh, past ages of the earth and how they're still relatable or why they're important for us, uh, in, in the Anthropocene. So, in other words, it's a really good book. If you're interested in anything about, like, kind of the past, you know, anything like that, uh, geology, biology-wise, definitely pick up this book. Um, I really, really uh, enjoyed it overall. I think everyone else will, too, if this is your sort of thing. So, thank you once again uh, to Random House for Thomas Holiday, Halliday's, excuse me, uh, Otherlands. And thank you so much for watching this review. I know I'm probably a little bit rusty. I haven't done 
haven't done too many reviews lately, so I gotta get back into it. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out, you know, all my other stuff. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do it is actually probably by uh, checking out my Etsy shop. And even if you don't want to buy anything uh, where I make kind of different nature and philosophy signs and whatnot, uh, definitely just give like you know the the shop a like and stuff and help me out in the algorithm there. Don't forget to leave a comment below about which of these three books you'd like to see me review next, if I can actually you know get them to show, show up in the correct orientation and stuff on the camera. Uh, let me know down below which one you'd like to see next. And thanks so much for watching. And always remember, whatever you end up reading, read victoriously.